Welcome to the Pearl Muscle Project video training series. In this episode, we look at habitat quality and our habitat scorecards. We all know that in a normal market, good quality farm produce will achieve a much better price than that of poor quality. With a results-based agri-environment payment scheme like the Pearl Muscle Project, this is exactly the same, except our market is ecological quality. So, how do we assess this quality? Well, we use our habitat scorecards. You may ask, in a project designed to protect the freshwater pearl mussel, why are we looking at land habitats? Well, we know that the higher the quality of the habitats, the higher the quality of water that comes from them. This approach also means that since the habitat score is within the farmer's control, the farmer can increase their payments if they wish, just like any other market commodity. In the Pearl Mussel project, there are three scorecards. They are peatland, grassland and woodland or scrub. So, the first task is to confirm that the habitat types are correct on the ground and match with the farm plan. If there's any variation, this should be corrected by the advisor. So mark your route in advance to ensure your W transect captures the variation in the vegetation within the plot. Remember that plots must be scored between the 1st of June and the 15th of August every year for private lands and every second year for commonage lands. Now, Let's take a look at our scorecards. The three cards all have three sections. Section A is ecological integrity. Section B is hydrological integrity. And section C is threats to the site integrity. Each card has a range of questions to capture the quality of the plot and each answer to these has an associated score. The maximum number of marks on each card is 100, but for payment purposes, however, we convert this to a score out of 10. We look more closely at the cards now. Let's start with peatland. A1 is how many positive indicators are present in the plot. Here, we list the positive indicator species in three columns, the shrub layer, the sedge or herb layer, and the moss layer. We refer to these three columns later on in the scorecard. For help in identifying some of these plants, we've got a good tip sheet with all the photos of these species. A2 is the combined cover of positive mosses and lichens throughout the plot. Cover can be quite tricky to figure out sometimes. So, for example, if there is a cover of 30% as you walk over your transect, you should see these mosses and lichens at one in every three of your steps. A3 is the presence of non-native species within the plot, such as rhododendron or self-sown conifers. The presence of any of these even single individuals results in a minus 10. However, where these occur along a boundary, or in the case of a conifer shelter belt, they shouldn't be recorded here. A4, what is the combined cover of all negative indicators throughout the plot? This list is given in the top right of your scorecard, so please note which one of the negative indicators occurs on your score sheet. A5 is the quality of vegetation structure. Very poor structure is when the vegetation height is very short and there's little or no heather on wet heats. It's often lacking its moss and lichen layer and shrub layer. It's generally a result of overgrazing or recent peat cutting. Poor structure refers to rank vegetation. 
Generally, these areas are dominated by single species such as heather, purple moorgrass or mat grass. Litter or dead grass cover is often very high, forming a thatch, and there is little or no moss cover or species diversity. Moderate structure is broken into two categories. High grazed is where significant areas, more than 25% of the plot, have a tight vegetation, but this isn't throughout the plot. The low grazed moderate structure is where more than 25% of the plot have rank vegetation, but this isn't throughout. Good structure is where there's a good diversity of our shrub layer, our sedge or herb layer, and our moss layer. And we'll have a good representation of vegetation heights and condition. B1 is the contribution to watercourses. And this question captures the importance of the plot to the watercourse. Dry plots with no natural wet features would be quite rare in our peatlands with only very heavily modified plots being included here. Natural wet features and seepage zones generally comprise sedge areas or areas with a lot of sphagnum moss. Plots with a natural watercourse, as mapped by the OSI, the Ordnance Survey of Ireland, would be awarded 15 points. B2 is surface hydrology and artificial drainage features. Significantly altered bog or heath hydrology is where there's frequent widespread free flowing drains on the plot with notable effects on the surrounding vegetation, affecting more than 20% of the plot. Moderately altered bog or heath hydrology is where these free flowing drains affect less than 20% of the plot. Gullies that have been created through erosion should also be considered in here. Slightly altered bog or heath hydrology is where drains are present but have little impact on the vegetation and are generally impeded and there's no noticeable flow in any of the drains. Moderately intact bog or heath is where historic drains or turf banks are present but the damage is largely recovered. Otherwise intact bogs or heaths with historic drains or roads all fit into this category. Intact bog or heath is where there's no historic drainage or disturbance. C1. Is there evidence of damage due to burning? High is when the level of impact of burning damages the moss layer and affects more than 10% of the plot. Medium is a medium impact burn, affecting less than 10% of the plot. C2. What is the extent of bare soil and erosion? High impact relates to greater than 10% cover of bare or eroding soil. Medium is 1-10% to cover of bare or eroding soil. Low may occur along regularly used routes, but little or no sign of erosion. The area of bare ground will comprise less than 1% of the plot, and none, there is little or no evidence of bare peat. C3. Is there damage due to supplementary feeding? C4. What are the impacts due to turbery? Very high is where there's active peat cutting in the current cutting season. High is where the most recent activities are in the previous cutting season, affecting more than 10% of the plot. Medium is where the most recent cutting activities were in the previous cutting season, but that less than 10% of the plot was affected. And none is where no cutting has taken place for the last two calendar years. So, for example, if you were scoring a plot in 2020 that hadn't been cut since 2018, this would be awarded a zero. C5. 
Is there any evidence of damaging activities to vegetation or soil? And then at the bottom of the scorecard, there are comments or recommended actions. So please use this to fill in any management advice that you can provide that may allow the farmer to improve the plot score. Now, let's look at our grassland scorecard. A1 is how many positive indicators are present in the plot. You'll see a whole list of positive indicator species here and for help in their identification, please see our tip sheet, which has useful photos. It also has a lot of information on some of the questions in this scorecard. You'll also see asterisks beside some of the species, meaning that they're wetland indicators, and they're referred to later in this scorecard. We mentioned earlier in the video about the need to walk a W transect in order to capture any variation in vegetation type within the plot. The idea being that you record all positive indicators that occur in the plot and get a good handle on their total cover. Where a plot is just short of a higher points category for A1 than any additional positive indicator species near the boundaries of the plot, such as along watercourses or other wet features, can be included. While this won't have a huge impact on the cover in A2, it will benefit farmers, including those with green land, for attaining or creating buffer zones or semi-natural field margins. A2. What is the combined cover of positive indicators throughout the plot? As I mentioned earlier, estimating cover can be tricky. So, for example, if you had a cover of, we'll say, 50%, as you walk over your transect, you should see these positive indicators, one in every two steps. A3. What is the combined cover of negative indicators throughout the plot? You'll see here that creeping and spear thistle are both listed as negative indicators. However, the marsh and meadow thistle are listed as positive indicators. If you have any doubt as to the identification of either of these, have a look at the photograph on our tip sheet. A4 is vegetation structure. This is an either or question, depending on whether the grassland is primarily grazed or closed off for silage. Where it is primarily grazed, poor structure is where greater than 75% of the plot has either tall or short sward with few flowering plants. Moderate structure is where it is between 25 and 50% as either tall or short vegetation, and good is where more than 50% has a variety of tall and short vegetation with intermediate vegetation throughout. There's a useful diagram on our chip sheet that demonstrates this distribution of structure. For plots closed off for silage, assume a good structure and award 10 marks. B1 is a contribution to watercourses. This captures the importance of the plot to watercourses and ultimately captures the level of risk of the grassland plot to water quality and the freshwater pearl mussel. Wet features in this section are pretty much what they say on the tin and refer to wet areas in the plot. They are often characterised by rushy patches or areas of dense branched mosses or sphagnum moss. Dry plots with no wet features will receive zero here. Do also note that plots that have not received a score in A1 or A2 should receive a zero here. As with the other scorecards, plots with wet features but without OSI or Ordnance Survey of Ireland mapped water courses receive 5 marks and those with these water courses receive 15. B2 is the wetness as indicated by the cover of wetland indicators. Remember our positive indicators in A1 with an asterisk? Well, 
The total cover in this question includes those species, plus rushes and purple moorgrass. There's a choice of five cover categories. B3 is artificial drainage features within the plot. Drained grassland are frequent widespread free-flowing drains within the plot that affects more than 20% of the plot. Partly drained is where free-flowing drains affect less than 20% of the plot. Both of these categories, the drains are generally relatively recent and are fully functional. Past drainage is when the drains are present but the flow is impeded and they are usually fully vegetated or naturalised. And no drainage is where there are no artificial drainage features present. C1. What is the cover of encroaching immature scrub? And we ask that you identify the main species. This question generally refers to sites where there are signs of recently reduced grazing levels. Immature encroaching scrub refers to brambles, seedlings and trees of less than 1.5 metres in height. There are four categories of cover. C2. What is the cover of bracken? Here we are referring to the cover of dense bracken. Dense bracken will tend to have little or no grasses or flowering plants underneath and will be dominated by bracken litter. There are three categories of bracken cover. High, which is greater than 50%, medium of 11 to 50%, and low is 0 to 10%. If the plot has greater than 50% cover, you might want to consider if it is dominating the plot. If so, you should use the scrub scorecard and award a total of 5 out of 10 for the plot. C3. What is the cover of rhododendron? We have four categories here. Severe, where there are dense clumps and many of the plants are flowering. Moderate, are not forming dense clumps but the plants may be flowering. Slight, are generally small plants and these are usually not flowering and absent. C4. To what extent is the ground poached? There are five categories as per the scorecard. But note that the not poached category does allow for small patches around gateways or gaps between fields but shouldn't exceed 1% of the entire plot. C5. Is there any evidence of any damaging activities to vegetation or soil? Remember, any issues not recorded elsewhere in the scorecard may be captured here. Then the comments section is there to provide any management advice that you can suggest that may improve the plot score for the farmer. Now, let's look at our woodland scrub scorecard. This scorecard covers three habitat types, woodland, scrub and dense bracken. If the plot is dominated by dense bracken, then assign a score of 5 out of 10 and no further assessment is required. If it's not dominated by dense bracken, you need to decide whether your plot comprises woodland or scrub. Woodland generally has a canopy of more than 5 metres in height, or in the case of wet or bogland, 4 metres. Scrub is usually anything less than this. You'll also find useful information on our scorecard tip sheet. A1 is for scrub dominated areas only. Describe the diversity and structure of the scrub present. Poor relates to gorse dominated scrub. 
moderate is when two or more woody species are present but not necessarily common throughout. Good is where there are three or more woody species present and these must be commonly distributed throughout the plot. Very good is when four or more woody species are common throughout the plot. For very good, there should also be a variation in vegetation height and structure throughout the plot. A2 refers to woodland dominated areas only. For further information on the canopy, shrub and field layer, see our tip sheet. A2 1. Describe the canopy layer. This generally refers to the proportion of non-natives, including non-native conifers, within the native woodland. There is poor, which is frequent non-natives, moderate, comprising occasional non-natives, and good, that comprises native woodland with no non-natives, including conifers. A2. 2. Describe the shrub layer. The shrub layer occurs in the understory of a well-developed native woodland. Typical shrub species may include hawthorn, holly, blackthorn, gorse, brambles and small birches. The categories provided here are poor, moderate and good. A2. 3. Describe the field layer. This relates to the range of vegetation such as herbs, ferns and mosses. There are three categories. Poor, moderate, which typically has a low diversity of species or possibly is dominated by single native species, and good. B1 is the contribution to watercourses. As with the previous two scorecards, this captures the importance of the plot to watercourses. The first of the three categories is a dry site, which has no wet features. The second two categories are divided depending on whether there is an Ordnance Survey of Ireland OSI mapped natural watercourse on the plot or not. B2 is artificial drainage features within the plot. Widespread drainage is when frequent free flowing drains occur that affect more than 20% of the plot. Moderate drainage is when these free flowing drains affect less than 20% of the plot. Poor drainage is when drains are present but generally the flow is impeded and they're often vegetated or naturalised. And no drainage is when there are no artificial drainage features present in the plot. C1 Bare Soil and Erosion the high category comprises areas of bare soil that results in erosion. You may see high levels of poaching and excessive areas of bare soil in these plots. In moderate, these areas of bare soil do not result in erosion. In the low category, there is little or no man-made bare soil observed and no evidence of erosion or poaching. C2 Extent of damaging activities If there are any damaging activities, please list these in the comments section below. In the high category, the plot has been recently felled and or there is current dumping, burning or other damaging activities. In the moderate category, some evidence of historic felling has taken place 
or there is evidence of past dumping or other damaging activities, but these aren't currently taking place. And in the low category, there is no evidence of any damaging activities. And C3. Are there any invasive species in the plot? Such as rhododendron, Japanese knotweed or Himalayan balsam. And again, at the bottom of the scorecard, there is a space for comments and recommendations. This is the opportunity to provide advice to allow the farmer to improve their score. So there are three Habitat scorecards. If you want further information or you have any questions, you may contact us by email or phone or check out our website. Thank you for watching.